Welcome to TerryWilson3.com, home of TW3. Are, are, are you ready to take your money, business, and life to the next level? You are worth more, and you're about to hear how and why. So buckle up and listen up as we journey to the next level. Please welcome your guys to reach your goals, the TW3 family. Family. You're listening to TerryWilson3.com. TerryWilson3.com. Inspiring, informative, and entertaining content for the entrepreneur and small business owner. Thanks, Christopher B., and thank you guys for tuning in once again to TerryWilson3.com. This is episode 582. I want to talk to you about selling with purpose. Do you ever find yourself falling into a trap where you're just regurgitating facts, figures, you know, specifications, you know, what this will do, what this will do. And you just, you just go down a laundry list of all the different things that your product or service will do. And it just, sometimes it just falls flat. It doesn't compel a movement on the behalf of the buyer. Uh, maybe your sales have gone flat. Maybe you're an independent salesperson out there. Maybe you're a business owner and you're trying to figure out how can I juice up my, my sales? How can I juice up the, the call to action, make it more appealing, make it more you know time sensitive make it more like i act now well i was thinking about you know in times past you know some of our uh, moments of great success here at tw3 moments that we've had a lull you know the differences you know what were things that we could have done what what were things that we were doing you know how could we have done it better you know because i'm always just trying to become a better entrepreneur a better business person and it occurred to me about a couple of weeks ago, I was doing a jog and just thinking back on TW3 and just absolutely amazed at how exponentially this business has just grown over the last 15, going on 16 years. And why did it happen? And how did it happen? And we're not the only game in town. And there's tons of other business platforms, marketing platforms, management platforms, uh, uh, you know, services that offer everything that we offer. And some, to be quite frank, even better and cheaper. I don't know about better, but cheaper for sure. But how is it that we just took off and other companies who've been out there longer aren't half our size? Companies that have come out are, are struggling and trying to figure out how to get their, their um, corner on the market. And how did we do it and why did it work? And, and I, I think I deduce it down to this one thing. Early on, I was enthralled. I was just overwhelmed. I was just, all I could think about was what these tools, training, and technology that I had discovered, what it had done for me in my personal and professional life because I was just on the backdrop of you know my implosion back in 07, 08 when the housing market crashed and it pulled our music business down and we lost everything and that whole trying season that we went through and then trying to rebuild our lives, trying to redefine what we did, trying to find a new I professional identity. I had a personal identity and, and that comes through my faith and my family, but I needed, I needed a gig. I needed something to put food on the table. I needed something to that would be uh, able to sustain us through a bad economy at the time and and allow me to leverage the skills and the talents and the the abilities and the passions that I had and I just fell into this thing where I learned how to no matter what the product or service was I could that that was irrelevant but I come up with a process that got me in front of people and no matter what the product was, I just filled in the product, you know, as, as the economy changed, as things changed, you know, I first started out in the insurance and it was just life insurance. It was just final expense life insurance. And then it, it moved over into final expense life insurance and retirement planning. And then it moved into final expense life insurance, retirement planning to health insurance and accident insurance and business insurance and all these different financial tools. And then it, it morphed into well, it really doesn't matter what the product is. Everybody that has a product or service needs what I have discovered how to do, and that is get in front of the people that need, won't desire, and can afford what it is I offer. And that person is going to change from quarter to quarter because maybe the economy has changed. Maybe the product's no longer of value. So what was happening in that time period that no matter what the economy was doing, it just seems like I just kept growing and kept growing and kept growing 
and I deduce it down to I wasn't selling a product. I was selling purpose. Because everything I did, it was infused with my story that you can, whatever it is you want to do, no matter what area you're in, no matter what business you're in, no matter what, you know, your product or service is, you can do what you were created to do with the products, goods, and services that you are passionate about if you have a platform that provides you the two basic elements. You've already got the product. You just need the people and a process to get in front of those people. And so because I was telling my story and I was always testifying that this is how it happened to me, this is how it happened to me, it resonated. Because I, w- I could have bored, I could have bored people, you know, senseless. Well, well, you, what you got to do is you get a, a opt-in page and create a form, and then you have to have a call, strong call to action to have that opt-in, and then you have to have autoresponder to do this. And I could have just used all of those fifty cent terms and vernacular that might mean something if you're an online marketer, but means nothing to the average person. Means nothing to the average business person. But if I could tell a restaurant owner, hey, I can put butts in your seat. If I can tell an insurance guy, I'll have your calendar booked with appointments. For people, I can tell that doctor we can have more patients coming through the door. If I could tell whatever that business person is, what you need is more people that find value in what you offer and you can offer a commensurate uh, fee for your value proposition. That, okay, boom. I don't care what it is. I don't care if you have to take a widget, rub it three times and yell at the moon. I don't, you know, I don't care what the process is. Just get me to this, this solution. And so... It all came down to I figured out not because of any book, education, professor, or it just it was the good Lord whispering in ears of me just excited about, oh my gosh, I have a process here. If you'll just do this and this, this, it doesn't matter what you're selling, you're going to be able to get in front of the people that that wants what you offer. And so it was that purpose, it was that sense of purpose that I was talking with to the audience that people resonate with. So I want to give you some ways real quick uh, in just a short amount of time here, about 17 ways that you can infuse purpose in what you're selling. Yes, you sell a product and that product might be a service. It might be a physical product. It might be a digital product. It might be whatever it is. But if you can infuse what you're selling with a sense of strong purpose, I'm telling you right now and and put your passion. And if you can do that, I'm telling you the sales take care of themselves. So number one, start with the why. Begin by discussing the underlying problem or need your product or service addresses. Share a compelling story or real life scenario that highlights the pain points you're offering. I remember I just did this intuitively. Like I said, it was, I'm just, what I'm doing is writing down what I did and not thinking about, except on the backside 10, 15 years later, why did that work? And one of the things I remember, it was, I was saying business was always hard because every day I got up and it was a brand new day to find new people. And 85, 90% of my day was spent trying to find clients to talk to, prospective clients to talk to, leads to talk to. Inspiring, informative, and informational. This is TTW3. Attention all small business owners. Are you looking to expand your reach and grow your customer base? Look no further than having a website and blog for your business. With a website and blog, you can increase your visibility, cost-effectively market your products or services, and build trust and credibility with potential customers. A blog is also a great way to engage with your customers and build a community around your brand. And the best part? You can access all this valuable information 24-7. Don't get left behind. Give your business the competitive edge it needs and create a website and blog today. You can get a professional website hosted with all the software you need for as little as $10 a month by going to terrywilson3.com slash hosting. That's terrywilson3.com slash hosting. Slash hosting. Slash hosting. Ho, 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 it's my day. Are you tired of struggling to close those important deals? Well, we've got a game changer for you. Introducing the Magic Pen, a new traditional ink pen 
with an extraordinary twist. Not only will it sign a deal, but it'll help you sell and close it first. How you ask? The new Magic Pen by TW3 is designed to work its magic with a simple tap on most smartphones. It can text, email, leave voicemails, and follow up with messages on whatever you're selling, making your life so much easier. And here's the best part. It's just $15.97 as an ad on when you purchase a tap card at terrywilson3.com slash tap card. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to revolutionize your sales game. Get your magic pen today and watch those deals roll in. Visit terrywilson3.com slash tap card now and unlock the power of the magic pen. Your success is just a tap away. Oh, ho, ho, it's magic. Now, if you know what you're worth, you want to deal with your worth. But you got to be willing to take the hit. Yeah. And not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. This is TTW3. And now, rather than me spending 85, 90% of my time in that activity, I've learned to automate that entire process. So when I get to my desk during the day, I've got every 15 minutes with 10 minute windows in between people to talk to. My calendar is full. And it's because I've got a process that engages clients, go ahead and pre-qualifies them and then ask them to book an appointment. So that right there, just me telling my stories about my days in the music business and and early on in the insurance business and having to chase people rather than chasing people. Now I'm being chased that. Oh, my gosh. People resonate with that. If you're in sales, if you know what it's like to do direct sales. Oh, my gosh. You're like, sign me up. What do I have to do? Tell me. Oh, why? Speak to me. You know, so that that was huge. Number two. Customer stories. Oh, stories sell better than anything else. And when you can have a customer tell the story, share success stories or testimonials from satisfied customers who have experienced positive outcomes by using your products or services, these stories can resonate with potential buyers on a personal level. And honestly, they're going to speak louder and more verbosely, and they're going to resonate better than anything you can say. There's a reason why my entire website and all of my marketing material is everybody from Bill Champlin of Chicago to John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneurs on Fire to Cliff Ravenscraft Podcast Answer Man to Ray Edwards, uh, everybody I've ever worked with and in between talking about their experience with working with or alongside or for from or whatever, whatever their engagement was working with me because they are going to be able to say things about myself that are going to hit that other people or myself saying it, it just doesn't hit. So when you can grab a hold of some stories, grab a phone, video camera, whatever you got, and just, hey, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, can I just ask you a quick question? What was your experience here with us? And And let them talk and say, and say, I just would like to have other people hear from people who've had an experience with my product or service and what they can expect. And, and by the way, Mr. Mr. Smith, just tell it all, tell it all, let, let it, you know, and, 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 and I've had, uh, you know, one of my good friends now, I, he, he, former ADA of New York city called me the Southern Colombo. And if you could get through the dialect and some of the oh shucks and Gomer Powell stuff, there's really some value. in what you know, he was throwing a little shit, but that was fine because he's saying, Hey, for all my friends and people up here in the Northeast, you know, that's what you're going to have to deal with, you know, but if you get through that, there is some gold at the end of that. I let it all out. That's one of the, the more popular uh, customer stories I have of him sharing his story of using our products, goods and services and how it's been able to help him and his business grow his business and all of that. Uh, but telling it like it is, you know, so you do the same thing. Number three, lifestyle enhancement. Emphasize how your product or service can enhance the buyer's lifestyle or make their life easier. Consider discussing the time, money, or stress savings they will enjoy. Before you list out specs, before you list out, you know, widgets, before you list out anything, just go straight to this is how this product or service is going to make your life easier. It's going to save you time. It's going to save you money. You're not going to be... If you can tell people, I'm going to diminish your stress in this particular area right here because they're all ears because the world is stressed out. 
So the more you can speak to that and resonate. And so that's how mine was able to grab people because most salespeople, most business owners, they know what it's like to go out and try to prospect and try to find new clients. But when you can say, hey, you're not ever going to have to cold call again. You're never going to have to go pester your friends, family, and foes trying to find someone that you can pitch to. You are going to be able to go out and play golf, and in the evening, you're going to come home, and your calendar is full. And I'm going to show you. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you a video of me. And I show them a video of what I did, and I show them how I, I use some cold marketing pieces that I have, and the system's going out, and it's doing what it's doing. And then I'm out there just shanking the ball left and right, but having a good old time because, you know, you don't, you know, what do they say, sex and golf's two things you don't have to be good at to enjoy. I'm out there having a good time and just terrible at it i come back and there's my calendar and all i'm doing is talking to the people and i probably my system probably cold called and got hung up on by thousands of people and a few hundred were interested but only about uh 50 or 60 were even qualified now at 50 or 60 only about 10 15 of them booked appointments now that 10 or 15 of them are booked appointments only five or six of them kept it and paid but that's the process that I didn't have to go through while I was playing. My system was doing it all for. So it, when I show that in a video for them and I, and I was able to, to give that, you have to position your product or service the same way. You have to speak to how it, it doesn't matter what it is you sell. If you're just a, not just, I mean, that's one of my favorite things in, in favorite business. If you're a restaurant, Hey, wouldn't you like just to sit back and not have to worry about a meal tonight and cook and prepare and all that and just sit down and enjoy and let us wait on you, let us dote on you, and let us give you five-star cuisine? Doesn't that sound nice? And by the time you're able to eat this, you couldn't pay. You can go out and buy groceries and do this for, for hardly any less and get the experience that we're at. You know, you just got to position it a lifestyle enhancement. So when you're thinking about your marketing pieces, when you're thinking about what you're putting out on social media, when you're thinking about what you're talking to and, and speaking to, speak to how this enhances their life. Number four, one of the ways that you can infuse purpose in what you're selling rather than it just being a product is how it solves real problems. Highlight the practical issues your product or service solves. This is the solution aspect of your offering, showing how it can make the buyer's life better because I've isolated this problem. So here's the thing you always have to think about. What is that specific people group that you're targeting with your marketing? What's their biggest problem? Now, how do you position your product or service as the solution to that problem? It could be as simple as, hey, come out and watch a ball game today and take your mind off all of the blah, 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 blah. People are stressed. Everybody's stressed. And maybe how does your product relieve stress? Is it entertaining? Is it distracting? Is it give them something that's easy to do outside the house to get, you know, just to enjoy time with the family? See, no matter, rather than selling, you know, this hamburger or this, 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 this food or whatever, maybe you should be selling the fact that how would you like to get away from it all, come in a, a, a great atmosphere, family atmosphere, and spend time with your family around the table. I mean, now, all of a sudden, it doesn't matter what the food is, isn't it? I'm telling you, people buy purpose more than product. Infuse what you're selling with purpose. Number five, have an emotional impact with what you're offering. Discuss the emotional impact your product or service can have on the buyer. Does it bring joy, relief, or a sense of accomplishment? Connect with the audience's emotion. And I cannot stress this enough. You could be, you know, Mr. Macho Man out there, but here is one psychological fact I have come to really, really appreciate. The buying decision, I don't care what your personality type is, your major cognitive functions are. You could be Mr. Analytical. You could be Spock. You could be that guy that just that does it. But psychology, basic psychology teaches us this. And it's been proven with neuroscience and psychology and all the other sciences that has to do with thinking. And that's this. The buying decision is an emotional decision. And then people use rationale and logic to validate the emotional decision and want that they have. 
And so if you lead in with, we got this spec, we got this spec, we do this analytically, we, we save you money and it's all analytical, logical, logical, logical. And by the way, I've done my Myers-Briggs. I know what my major judging function is. It is not value-based. It is all logic-based. Inspiring, informative, and informational. This is TW3. Become an Elite TW3 member today and gain access to our mastermind group. The way you, you get into things is, you know, for someone like me, it's just, it's great to be around. Terry, you have made a huge impact in my life. I'm so grateful that God has brought you into my life. You're, you're the, the genuine article. You live what you talk about. Right now, Terry, I am so inspired after listening to you for the last 25, 30 minutes. You got me so jazzed up. I'm still blown away by your story. Because with that, you just bring so much experience. When I think of Terry Wilson, I think about the comeback kid. Oh, I think today is just demoed exactly the brilliance that you share. I truly believe the only way to go to the next level is to grow to the next level. Take your personal growth to the next level by joining the TW3 Mastermind Group today. TW3 Radio. That doesn't mean a person doesn't have values. It means they don't lodge or they don't make a judgment solely or mostly on their their internal value uh, makeup. They make it logically. And a good example of that is if the umpire's behind the plate and guy throws the ball and it's a little bit outside the strike zone, but he realizes who that pitcher is and what the game is and the meaning of a value based judger will call that a strike where a logic it's all analytical. That's a, that's a ball. It's outside. And that's just the different ways that people, I am, I am Mr. Spock when it comes to my logical or my judging function. But even that as a buyer, it starts with emotion. And, and they've proven that. So when you are conveying what you offer, you have to appeal to that person's senses of various emotions. You talk to car dealers and guys that own car lots. They'll tell you all the time, greatest salesman in the world is that new guy that's young and dumb and just excited. But why? Because... Emo- that excitement sells more than the guy that knows everything up and down about that car, all of the, the widgets and the analytics and everything else and can take it apart and put it back together. You know, he could be a mechanic. It is that excitement that is going to do better than the guy that uh, it can break it apart. And so we, as people who are passionate about our product goods and services, we get so in enthralled and in, in the weeds with all of it that all is all we do is turn sometimes into an encyclopedia when we're trying to communicate about it. And what will resonate with those people is I'm excited. I'm happy. I am. I am. I have less stress because of this. I I'm happier because I'm excited about this. This, you know, I have avoided this frustration, aggravation, irritation because of this right here. That is what communicates. That is what's resonating. That is what's going to, to, calls your potential buyer to say, I didn't get in on it. What, 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 what is this? So appeal, you know, it's that old Maya Angelou quote, right? People are often uh, quick to forget what, you know, what you told them, but they'll never forget how you make them feel. And it's just true. Number six, sustainability and values. If your product or service aligns with sustainability or ethical values, emphasize how supporting your brand can contribute to the greater good or cause. So what, you know, when when people buy your product or service, what commun- communicable value, what, what, what does it offer the community? When you shop local, you support your local economy. When you buy this from us, you're putting local people here in Boiling Springs, South Carolina to work. When you do this, you're helping your neighbor. You've got to align your interest with their interest. And that, the way you do that is you show how by them engaging you, they're helping themselves as well and their neighbors. Number seven, 
aspirations and dreams. That's another big uh, call to action. And I think is something that we were able to infuse early on. You know, it's one thing to go out and sell a website. It's another thing that says, and when you have this website, you're going to be able to monetize your message. You're going to be able to put purpose with your pain. You're going to be able to take all those things that's touched you in your life, put it in writing, blog, and then monetize that. What am I doing? I'm appealing to that person's dreams and aspirations to be able to create content and to 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 make sense out of all these things that's ever happened. You know, you know, Paul says, comfort those with the same comfort you've been comforted with. In other words, there's always purpose for your pain. If you can find a way to help other people that are struggling with the same thing you struggle with, it is the greatest sense of accomplishment. And so I was able to take a lot of business owners early on and say, hey, every one of you, no matter what industry you're in, you've had things you've had to overcome. And what you can do is talk about that, blog about that, podcast about that, send out emails about that on a newsletter. And when you do that, you're helping, you're creating and you're comforting an entire community of like minded people. And that is going to be how you're going to be able to do content marketing and help other people. And that just appealed to so many people's sense of, I could do this. And it it infused now, not only am I selling real estate, selling insurance, selling food, selling, you know, uh, products, goods and services out of a retail restaurant to a store shop or whatever I did. But now I'm doing, I'm doing that. But I'm also, it's got a much greater context to it. And I'm telling you, now all of a sudden, it's not just a job, but forgive the, the, the spiritual overtones here, but it is what it is. Now it's got a, it's got a ministry attached to it. I don't, I'm not just working for a living, but I'm ministering for a living. I'm helping others for a living. That's huge. That's huge. And if you can position your products, goods, services and start seeing it in those terms, you're going to be able to, number one, enjoy what you do, but number two, Help other people see what you see, see that vision, and, and, and join in. Number eight, community connection. If your product or service fosters community or connection, emphasize the sense of belonging and camaraderie that buyers can experience by using it. One of the greatest things that we did is when we have uh, folks that have joined our membership and became an elite member, they are automatically brought into our our mastermind group, which is a small knit community of high achieving business owners, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs that are really wanting to go to the next level. And so these are are folks that are really, and that sense of community, that sense of being able to connect with other like-minded people is probably, and if you interview them more valuable to them than uh, the actual tools and the training that we give. That just that sense of community, because it's hard to find a community like that. And so you build a community around your products, goods and services as well as much as you can. Number nine, convenience and time saving. Discuss how your product or service can free up time and make life more convenient for the buyer. Time is valuable commodity and your offering can help them reclaim that. So uh, another marketing idea filter that you might want to put on what you're putting out there is ask yourself, how is it what I do, what I offer saves other people time and helps them in a, a convenient way? If you can do that, you're going to have a stronger call to action. Number 10, Customization and personalization. If your product or service offers customization op, uh, options, highlight how it can cater to the unique preference and needs of each buyer. That's huge. You know, that's one of the things that we leaned on early on. Hey, when you get our platform, it's not like you're you're buying something that you have to sell uh, like anything else. You can rebrand, repurpose, redo whatever, and now it's your own thing. Number 11, problem prevention. Emphasize how your offering can prevent future problems or setbacks. Buyers may not always think about the long-term benefits at first, so it's essential to bring this to their attention. Number 12, security and peace of mind. Oh, I can tell you right now, this is huge especially in the, uh, the wake of all the craziness going on, the world's on fire. And so if your product or service can be wrapped in a sense of peace of mind, a sense of uh, greater security, no matter what it is, no matter what it is, if you can wrap it in that, I'm telling you, you are going to have a lot of eyeballs looking and wanting to engage what it is you offer. So if your product or service provides a sense of security or peace of mind, explore how it can reduce worry, stress, 
in the buyer's life. Number 13, longevity and durability. If your product has a long lifespan or is exceptionally durable, discuss how it's a wise investment that will stand the test of time. Number 14, free trials and guarantees. Mention any risk elements and ask, uh, excuse me, mention any risk-free elements such as free trials or money-back guarantees that can install confidence in your potential buyers. If you're in the coaching space out there, one of the best things we did several years ago, it's been eight, nine years ago, is we offered a 90-day money-made guarantee. And what that meant was if you get our training, our platform, our, our system, and you do verifiably do exactly everything we tell you to do, in 90 days we guarantee you a minimum uh, return on your investment or we get involved in work until you get that minimum. And it's that way we were able to mitigate. And plus, what it did for us, it just sort of did away with that. Well, I bought the system. It just don't work. No, 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 no. If, if, if you bought my system, you also have to buy my support. You also have to buy my strategies. You also have to do what we tell you to do, okay? And if and that just sort of, uh, we can tell anybody that, you know, would say such. We say this person did not make money because they didn't do exactly what we told them to do. And, when, and they didn't verify it, okay? Because if they did... We offer this. So ask them, do they have a certificate? Because anybody that signs up for that, we give them a certificate. And then it tells them, you have to do this min minimum amount of activity. You have to do this. You have to do this. You have to come to these trainings. You have to. If they do that and do it for 90 days, they are going to get results. Because now you're not only just buying our widget, but you're using it the way we tell you to use it verifiably. And it's just a numbers game. It's going to work. So, uh, that's been one of the greatest things we've done for our business. And I would encourage you to do the same, especially if you are in the coaching space or the consulting space, uh, just to mitigate against any, you know, false claims that something doesn't work when it's not the thing that doesn't work. It's the person not executing on the thing. Number 15, exclusive benefits. Share any exclusive or unique features that sets your product or or services apart from your competition, making it a must have for your target audience. So be thinking about what makes you different and, and, it, you know, highlight that you, you can highlight that without throwing shade on the other people. I never mention other people's names and other products, goods and services that are similar because it's irrelevant. Here's what we do. It's named after the person that started it. So, you know, it's not um, we're not hiding behind some sort of brand. We've been out there for 15 years. We guarantee results. We I mean, I just boom, 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 bullet point, bullet point. So be thinking about how you can do that because you're going to uh, you, you're speaking to people's worries and fears and you're infusing what you offer with purpose when you can do that number 16 comparison with competition and this goes on with a 15 a little bit without diving into specifications gently compare your product or service with others on the market highlighting what makes it superior and i like to do that but just stylistically i don't ever mention names number 17 call to action encourage listeners to take action by visiting your website signing up for a newsletter or engaging with your brand in some way Make it easy for them to learn more and make a purchase. And finally, summarize the key points and benefits you've discussed and reiterate how your product or service can fulfill those purposes and needs of your target audience. By using these talking points I just gave you, you can create a compelling uh, you know, product, good, or service that is infused with purpose and value of your product. And that way you're not just listing off, rambling off some sort of, you know, list of you know, specifications and, and benefits and all that other stuff. But you're going right to the heart of the matter, which is the purpose. If you start selling purpose, it really doesn't matter what the product is because people are wanting to buy security. People are wanting to buy a, a way of mitigating stress. People are wanting to buy comfort. People are wanting to buy something that's going to save them money. That's going to be easier. What you've got to do is align your products, goods, and services in that purpose that people already have and desire. And I'm telling you, when you sell purpose rather than product, you are going to see greater profits. Till next time, Mrs. Terry. Thank you for listening to our show today. If you have any questions or would like to speak with us about your goals, then please call or text us at 864-507-9696. 
Reach out to us online at terrywilson3.com. 